Okay. I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Oh, that's from a real girl group. Let's clap. Miss Technical Difficulties was trying it. So we're going to give it to you straight. No homo. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another Encore review. <laughs> Um, I am the extra water weight apparently everybody's put on in the last 20 years, Chris. Ooh. <laughs> and I am that currently delivered <laughs> from the, from it. Cause you know, we can't even say what it is. <laughs> the religious oh community. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> oh my gosh. We are just going to jump right into it. We are on episode two of E of ebt's encore y'all already know from last week like comment and subscribe whatever you want in that comment section honey and we will yes. really really be talking we love the conversations that have been popping up on our ig and things so let's get into these fly i mean these girls and i told them. you to stop calling on that I'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i love you all i love all of you i promise um okay I'm lying. Um, <laughs> so it starts basically right after last week. Uh -huh. Keely was cussed out uh, by our Rufa saying she was divisive. Um, no lies were told. But I also think, you know, like we said last week, it struck a chord. Yeah, um, of course. A few things to notice at the beginning of this episode. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that this is like the BGC house? From Atlanta, like I said, it looked familiar. Like it was giving me something. It was Loki giving me the house from um, Jocelyn shit. But when you said <sighs> BGC, that definitely struck up all types of memories because I've seen so many people get their ass beat between those same walls. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many hands been thrown in that house. Okay, um, but yeah, okay. So skipping the bullshit. We come right, down, Sita, Sita pops up with Tyra Mill. She's like, oh, girl, she didn't already done had hers. Is Y'all about <laughs> to have this queen mandate um, and gets the girls um, prepared for that. So what the queen mm -hmm. mandate was, was there each week they're going to vote for a uh, queen of the house. And right. that person basically gets to be the tiebreaker, the deciding vote of, like, you know, any issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. um, that basically sounded like what it was. And then there was a cute crown that looked like Drag Race needs to steal that next season. <laughs> <laughs> they got it from Fierce Drag Jewels. <laughs> <laughs> FierceDragJewels.com. Okay. Um, so, first impression, what did you think about this Queen Mandate thing? Did you think this is going to work? Is it stupid? What do you think? Um, I thought it was an interesting twist. Um, this is a show that I feel like is going to need a few twists, no shade. So I'm all for adding in some different factors because at this point, like we are a seasoned audience. We've seen Bad Girls Club. We've seen R&B Divas. We've seen all of these things. We don't want a rehash of that. I think this mm -hmm. is a good way to add in, you know, some different type of shit into it and make it more interesting. Like spice it up. <laughs> spice it up. Sp spice um... it up. <laughs> Another real girl group. Um, so <laughs> you gonna quit shading these women? You gonna stop shading them? Okay, cause my thing with the Queen Mandate is like I like it turned into Survivor or Drag Race All Stars really quickly, mm -hmm. and I like those type of elements. But here it's one of the it's like almost like the wrong direction because you having a bitch that's gonna tell everybody what to do creates right. that dynamic of a girl group problem. You always have that one that wants to tell everybody else what to do. Um, in this case, it seems like they knew you hoes was gonna be arguing, so it mm -hmm. makes sense to have some type of tiebreaker. So, I don't know. Next thing y'all do it, let's come up with something else. Maybe the queen, y'all need to lip sync for y'all lives and the person that wins gets, you know, to, to say in the house or something or, like, throwing hands. I don't know. Yeah, because y'all was, was talking about the queen gets immunity from getting voted mm -hmm. out or something like that. But it was like, okay, if y'all gonna all be a group the whole time, what is she getting voted out of? Like, songs or... <laughs> right. Like Y'all not gonna be featured to on be tracks. Y'all don't get producing credits. <laughs> she don't get to be on a single. <laughs> <laughs> is it like that's, musical that's chairs to where whoever is out at the end gets to 
Right. If there's four <laughs> girls left. Because I said there should be some type. Okay, so here's the me and you moment. I said there should be, like, some type of format, like, making the band. Where, uh-huh. n- separate from this show, but, like, having girls be able to choose their own girl group through voting each other out is right. not a bad concept. But as far as these, like, Irish said, like, uh, the girls from 702 said, uh, Misha, was like, we sold more records than... Keely or somebody like that. So how? Why would I be the? Why would she be the one to tell me something as a queen or anything like that? And if we're all queens, then what's the point of voting? Exactly. Um, but apparently, Pamela is the queen. Queen. It came down to Aubrey versus Pamela, and um, Keely voted for herself uh, because <laughs> we are rooting for everybody black. And I know they was thinking that in that moment. They was like, I mean, we like you, Aubrey, but you know what? Let me not. Let me not. That's how he did. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Do it. Do it to me. I did. <laughs> um, but no, it's very that. Like it's like you got white. You got this one white woman who, as you see throughout the episode, and you see throughout last week, Aubrey is there doing the work. Okay, yeah. it's not like Aubrey's not doing the work, and it is kind of unfortunate that she didn't win because we had Pamela win, who is a more passive voice, who is a more like, oh, let's pray about it and let's, you know, let's be delivered. But, (laughs) you know, we'll get there. We will. Um, So, yeah, Pamela becomes queen or whatever. Did you want to, um, did you want to stop and make a note? Okay. Yeah. Um, so Pam becomes queen or whatever, and we move on to the next day, honey, where they go to the studio. Um, we will be right back after this commercial break for water weight. If you need to drop a few pounds, run around a big ass house and argue. You are not going to have the commercials be shady. <laughs> this is not WandaVision, okay? This is so WandaVision. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything you want me to say? I do, I do, I. Oh, I'm sorry, another real girl. Okay, you're giving me Misha vibes. Oh. No, Misha could never. Don't do me. <laughs> <laughs> come come through Irish, tease. Oh, not Irish. Y'all see how he treat me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. And you guys, too. Yeah, y'all too. Um, <laughs> so what's up, y'all? We are back. We are continuing. Wait, we gotta clap. We gotta clap. We gotta clap. We gotta clap. Oh, we gotta clap. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, clap. <laughs> that time, I think I'm I glad we got rhythm because if we didn't have rhythm, that would be a lot harder. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? And I had to learn rhythm. I had to listen to Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation 1814 at least 22 times. But I got it. Miss you, uh, uh, miss you much. <laughs> <laughs> but on to some other R&B starlets. Liz. I just wanted to have a quick Star moment Liz. to talk. We are trying to be. What happened to us being positive in 2021? Okay. Don't you remember what we said at the beginning of the year? I did. I said I was gonna be nice to these hoes. Oh my god, <laughs> this is like a circle because we. I literally said I was gonna be nice to Keely, Brandy, and um, and the other girl, and now we doing content on Keely. Look at us. Yeah. Right, one out of three. One out of three. <laughs> I hear Brandy but, got a show um, coming in two weeks, so we'll see. Oh, Brandy got a show coming. Oh, we gonna you gonna tell me a little bit more about that one? I might review that too, child. You're turning over a new leaf, a whole new tree. <laughs> what did that, that mean? That was me pulling a tree out of the ground. <laughs> I never heard that before. I'm sorry, that's candy beans. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of people who, you know, be blowing down on a regular basis, can we get into this random um, little cut scene that they had did? Because you see they're having the little one, two minute scenes in between the commercials. Mm-hmm. And with one of them, um, Fallon had came and smelled like something. And <laughs> mm-hmm. why am I dead? All you hear is like, ooh, girls smell good in here. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Fallon over there. You know, she was, uh, she's hot. <laughs> and you know what that means. Black people come I mean, Fallon, call me. 
Right. Black people are coming with something creative ways to say they're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I was like, call me foul and I'm in Gwinnett. I got that good, good. You seem like you might be out in Gwinnett too somewhere, so. Mm. I got that good, good, but I'm looking for that great, great. No? no okay, I beep. Think one of the <laughs> you ask good, good, you get into cocaine. So, that's <laughs> not... What? <laughs> if you want to know where that reference comes from, please listen to our main show where we had a extenuous conversation about Whitney Houston. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> let me go powder my nose and we'll be right back. <laughs> so then we are back to the studio, which we have already deduced is in the basement because, you know, they are social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> so... So we are back into the basement for another scene of hearing the ladies lay down some vocals. And first up, we have Nivea. And she sounded, in my opinion, okay. How do you think Nivea sounded? My thing with Nivea is Nivea can sing. I think she needs to find (laughs) her voice a little bit. And that goes with all of them in the studio. I'm glad you didn't say the note. Oh, no, she definitely missed the note. But, like, finding the the way to get there, because she has it like she was at the piano last week. Like, she has it. Mm-hmm. It's just sometimes singing other people's songs and in the way that you have to sing other people's songs. Because that was a real, Dale, Demi or did, Demi or did. That was a very one of those girls. So I was right. trying to figure out, too, where their voices was going to go. So maybe that was it with her. No, and as a very professional shower singer, I can attest to when you be singing, it'd be like, hmm, I'm just going to change this key a little bit, but I'm changing it for me. For right. me. For me. And let me tell you something. Because it'll sound shower, better, not because I can't. Right. If you're in the shower and you're changing keys, click down, honey. Because if you click up in the shower, you think you sound good. In front of a studio mic, you do not. Okay? And that's that's what Irish and, and that's what the 72 <laughs> girls got to learn. Like, they didn't really have it. Okay, I'm just going to say this. This is the gay quiet director it. in me. Let's just Lay get it into down. it. Fuck the whole storyline thing. When it came to what the twins were saying to the 702 girls about being in the studio uh-huh. was absolutely correct. You girls are legends, sure. But singing basics are just mechanics at that point. Like, mm-hmm. Irish went in there. She was singing from her nose. That is... That is why she sounded like that, period. You have to sing from your diaphragm. You have to sing from your body. You can't sing from your nose or you sound like Rihanna. Like, and it only works for Rihanna because she can do that. Like, it's, don't sound cute We should do some fresh vocal warm-ups. We should because scales are important and they can sing. It's just your voice is not strong. And for them to, like, then turn around on the twins and be like, oh, well, y'all just starting shit and we done sold more records than you. Sure, Mila has sold more records than Cheers. But the problem is you not in a group with Mila anymore. You're by yourself in a group full of bitches that can sing. (laughs) So I would rather you take direction and, you know, have that be your story than it to be like what she was saying. Y'all going to look bad. I don't want y'all to actually look bad, even though she was covering her ass. I don't want y'all to look bad. And my real problem Mm -hmm. is with... Dubbed with two toned hair. I don't like them producers. You, as a producer, should have told Iris she was singing out of her fucking <laughs> Not nose. The producers. As a producer, you know how people are supposed to sound. We know how people are supposed to sound. Um, uh, Ice Cream Head should have told her, like, you need to switch that up and come from here. But the fact that Fallon had to come in from another room and tell them, I don't like them producers and they have to go. And Elijah Blake or Kelly, Elijah, what's his name? What's the girl name? I think it's Elijah Blake. Elijah Blake ain't made a hit in 10 years, and that was barely a blimp on the hit, on the Hot 100, honey. She's not no hit maker. So let's talk about... like We're going to fight over her, though, because I used to like his music. His music? I used to like his music. I haven't heard he it produced? recently, but I will go listen to it. Because <laughs> my thing is, why didn't they get somebody like Candy or somebody? Somebody that has that roots in girl group that also would have made sense as a producer. Also, Candy would have been cute. Right. Candy can make anybody sound good. So looking at Irish and Cher and, and, and the other 702 girl, why can't I remember Misha's name in the moment? 
the other seven <laughs> times, maybe she would have had a better handling on those vocals. But the fact that Fallon had to come in there and tell her the fucking truth, and it still came off as if the producer didn't know, because I um, right. she came through the set right after and did the same thing. Please, Kurt Franklin would never. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bitch. Real producers would never. Dark Child would never. Kirk Franklin will be somewhere over cosplaying as plies, so... Kirk Franklin will be <laughs> over there cosplaying as plies, so... T. That's all I had to say about that studio session. Like, when it comes to the music portion, I want it to be cute. That's all. I don't care what y'all argue about. No, I was just dead at uh, Misha catching the tea, though, or catching the shade in the little studio session. I was <laughs> like, um, I don't need frickin' frack over here talking shit. It was like, ooh! Okay, okay. Speaking okay, of now, everybody. we... We getting there. We getting to the mess. You know, right. I love me some mess. I like, <laughs> I, I like the story between the 702 girls and Misha. I mean, 702 girls and the twins. Because it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, if this was 20, 30, 25 years ago or something, y'all hoes would have been like right at their throats. Like, yeah, we successful too. But the fact that it's 2021 and <laughs> it's just not, the, you don't have the same equal bearing. That's all. It's not changed. Yeah, definitely. Y'all are two different places as artists. And those so places are so far from success that they look like they're the same place. <laughs> that wasn't nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, beep! <laughs> Let me cater to you, because baby, this is your day. And anything for me, <laughs> baby, you blow me away. Oh, wait, another girl group. Sorry. One that y'all trying to cancel. <laughs> I told you about saying these things when we first pressed... Beep. Wait, that didn't make sense. You got me so <laughs> frazzled and flustered with your shade to these beautiful artistic individuals. Oh, okay, Destiny anyways, Child. Um, I thought that too. I love them. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> no, but okay. So speaking of beautiful individuals, um, it's Pride Month. Shout yes, out to the is. girls. Shout out to the kids. Shout out to the queens. Um, but nobody told EBT, honey, because they had Pam on there acting a fool on this episode, and <laughs> I have questions. Okay, first of all, all of us thought Pam from Total was gay. Let's be honest. All of Knew us thought- Knew Pam from Total was gay. And we was like five. Like, uh, the whole time. There was never no illusion. I had her place there right with Phil and Lil's mom, right mm-hmm. with- Missy. Missy Elliott sometimes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. When she want to be. Right with Ellen most of the time. Who you say? <laughs> I said... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beep that. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That threw me off. <laughs> yeah, so it was an incident. They were in the studio waiting for uh, their turn to go in or whatever. That's what it gave. Mm-hmm. Uh, just lounged around the basement. And they didn't film this whole episode in the basement at this point. <laughs> <laughs> they like us. The location <laughs> okay. They was like, listen, we in the basement. We can walk upstairs. You go tell the rest of the drama. Um, <laughs> so um, Aubrey was a little, you know, Aubrey a little hefty. Aubrey had a little waterway going on. So she was tired and she just decided to lean up on Pam a little bit. You know, as a sister in my head, like, all I saw was a shoulder go, and Pam had swatted her arm away and was like, I'm not gay no more. I'm not gay no more. It was she like She took them Pam. side braids, flipped them to the other side, <laughs> and proceeded. This ain't funny, God. It's oh. not funny. It's not. So she. Uh, it's a little funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> Because it was one of those things where it's like, we're all into this drama with Keely and Aubrey and the group and vocals and dancing, all the things that make sense. So this argument just came out of nowhere. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. a, little, a little dash of homophobia just thrown on the top. So, Especially because the first thing that I said, the first, especially because the first thing that my mama said when I was like, oh, we need to watch this show called Encore featuring blah, 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 Pam from Total, blah, 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 blah. She's like, oh, Pam, the one that was gay that wasn't no more. I was like, oop. So apparently the T is known. So. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So basically she told Aubrey, she not gay no more. She delivered. You take your little dikey hands off me. And (laughs) Aubrey. (laughs) 
uh, Keely. I think the twins were in there too, and it was like mm-hmm. mad awkward because it was literally like it was like Real? Pam. I'm delivered from this gay shit. I'm not with that shit. <laughs> So Pam goes upstairs and tells uh, one of the 702 girls and Shamari, um, basically and Nivea, what happened. And they kind of, okay, she gives half the story. So she's basically like, yeah, Arby tried to come on <laughs> to me. And I was like, nah, because I used to be with women, but now I'm not. And so then Shamari and Nivea's confessionals gave very like, oh, well, she don't want to be approached. And she ain't got to be approached. And she don't want to be this. Th- right. And that's my fundamental problem with EBT. It'd be like, y'all be on the cusp of doing the right thing, and then y'all let somebody say something like that, and then let other people co-sign it instead of it being like a situation where it... Because that's not how it went at all. No, not how it went at all. Like It literally was like, that's why I said it that way. It literally gave me Aubrey with a little tie. She was a little sisterly, and that was it. Like It didn't like she reached up her And you know when you get sleepy, like your body get a little heavy. So her arm probably mm. got a little heavy. Pam felt it a little more weighing down on her. Because right. people be getting heavy when they sleep. Right. Pam, three pounds. So she don't know what that life is like. <laughs> that's all I eat. Um, so. <laughs> Shut up. It's like the way you know. Because when your diet consists of plant-based protein. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. Happy Pride Month. Um, so, yeah. Um, what, what else was I trying to get at with that? She touched me. Oh, yeah, because I knew she was a touch me not. I did know she was a touch me not, but I didn't think it was in that way. Shut so up. I know that was going to make the house uncomfortable, honey. I wrote that one out. I wanted to make sure it got like fully Oh, started, my gosh. So. Not a touch me not. No. So moving on, that happens, and then now we're to the other drama of the day. So after that happens, there's a conversation that happens between Keely and the twin, one of the twins, and it basically boils down to Isha and Misha can't sing. Um, <laughs> but my thing is this: what Fallon was saying was not again a lie, and I'm gonna keep saying that this whole series when. The villains are not lying because what she said mm-hmm. was, "You're not of the vocal ability, and you're not trying. And it's not that we don't want you to be in the group. It's that you're gonna look bad, and I don't want to. I don't want to look bad. And I don't want you to look bad, which is true. Right. It think about it, you get up there with five girls, and or how many of us? Nineteen bitches. You get up there with like <laughs> seventeen girls, and then all of a sudden, two girls can't sing, and it gets to their part, and now everybody talking about that one thirty second part. You know what I mean? mm Hmm. Um, so that, of course, like true reality TV style, Miss Misha was at the door listening in like that one. Um, the mansion only butts so big. <laughs> the mansion ain't butts so big. So Baba was at the door. And it's door, only like, bust so many places to smoke a blunt. <laughs> right. And so she was just trying to get her little roll on. And then she had ran into this conversation. <sighs> so then she goes upstairs. She gathers not gay Pam, Nivea, and Shamari again, because it seems to be a pattern. And it basically <laughs> turns into they hate us, they don't like us, they think we can't sing. Let's hold the Queen's Court. I really wish they had to call <laughs> T.S. Madison or Kaya because this Queen's Court. Because you know, I was screaming when they said Queen's Court. When they court. said, let's go to Queen's Court, honey, I was like, is this thing on? I was like, damn, they ain't trademarked that. Well, they couldn't even stay together, let alone trademark something. You are the sunshine in my life. You brought the sunshine. Another girl group. Who? The Clark sisters? I'm going to take you. You said that like I was supposed to know that. Like it was going to be like, I don't know, TLC or something. You Brought the Sunshine is their biggest song. <laughs> we went over this. You listen to Karen now. Tell the people. Well, I you played me Karen. You must not have played me I the did. Clark Sisters. So yeah, I haven't I heard that. you bring my or you got my sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, and just like that. Oh, not my lights. Lights. Somebody getting fired. Hey, hey. <laughs> Another good girl group. Um, so <laughs> it comes down to Queen's Court. We have Misha's case on deck. 
Um, Not Misha Case on the docket. <laughs> she's on the docket this week. Uh, they sit down and they have like this Ponderosa moment in the same room that they keep meeting in. I don't know if it's <laughs> the only room with like with eleven chairs or what's going on. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same video message room. Um, and so it comes out. Misha's like, "Well, let's cut the bullshit." Y'all said we wasn't talented. What's good? The funniest part about that was the other twin turned to the other twin and was like, "Yes, I don't know what that bitch just said. But and it gave me. back. And that was real tea because it was like, okay, right. well, the other one wasn't there. <laughs> right. You can tell she's been, she done got in trouble a lot because of the other one's mouth. Because she made it clear, hold on, hold on, before we even get into this. I didn't say shit. Cause, and but, that's also mm-hmm. that's also helping me um, differentiate them though, because now I'm starting to yeah. be like, okay, Fallon's the messy one. Felicia's the yeah. one who just be like in it, but not really in it. In it, right? She's her sister, <laughs> right? She's the sister. Like, if you get up talking shit, now I got to get up and help. But like, we are gonna make it known that I ain't got the same thing as your messy ass. <laughs> Because I do believe she believes I'm similar, but at the same time, she goes about saying her stuff completely different than Fallon. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what kind of Misha and, and Irish were kind of saying. It's like, okay, so you don't think we can sing? Fuck that. But like, we're in the group, we're here, so what do you want us to do? Like, not be here? Like, you have this, you're being nice, nasty about all of this, and yet you're not giving me no solution. You or Keely. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, so. I was really screaming at that whole court scene, though, because that shit was giving me, I don't want to say it, but 12 angry bleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And speaking of angry, when I tell you, out of nowhere, like the true reality show star she is, because now she is our new reality show star, Keely was <laughs> like, fuck all that. Fuck all that y'all talking about, okay? Let's talk about Pam being homophobic. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> it was like, ooh, what? <laughs> Keely was like, I'm, um, she came out and let us know that she was bilectual, honey. She is with her husband, but she is bilectual, honey. She is out here lecturing all the bias. Like, and it'd be funny when people like that, like that are married, or people like that you have never heard that from come out and say that. Cause it's always an argument when it's about like, some some gay shit. It's always like some. Well, I'm bi, so because somebody else said that before. recently, some cisgender female um, star who's married was like, "Oh yeah, well, don't forget, I'm bi." It's like, okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> only if your bi car is active, girl. Don't be trying to like. And then it wasn't a bi issue, but that's a whole different story. We'll get we'll get into that after Pride Month. But yeah, Kiwi has said that Pam was homophobic and it had bothered her, and then literally everybody else jumped Kiwi. <laughs> it was like, it was like, uh, she not wrong, and also, damn, <laughs> like, it's like you want to be on. Yeah, TV it was side. one of those things like, where. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was gonna go say, ahead. yeah, it was one of those things where it was like we had said earlier when you play that game of telephone and shit gets misconstrued. Of course, you're gonna have people mm-hmm. who are of differing opinions. Who technically they're both right in different ways, but because the message got muddled in the middle, it's now an argument over who's right. When in reality, you're kind of arguing about different things at this point. <laughs> All right. But if yeah, that's not reality TV in a right. nutshell. That, I was about to say, that is reality TV, because they will do that to them to people in a second. Where it's like, right. y'all are talking about two different things. Y'all arguing about two different things. But, like, it's all one argument now. Because, like, mm-hmm. they carried that energy over from what they were talking about before to <laughs> Keely. My, my thing was when she was like, oh, she was like, the level of professionalism is demoralizing. What did that give you? <laughs> the level of professionalism is demoralizing. <laughs> Ooh, what, what does is that, that give? The me? level of unprofessionalism is far too much, far too great. You know. Oh, this. uh, Latrice. <laughs> Latrice Snatch Game season four. Jordan I was gonna say either Latrice or um or um Vivacious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my god! Shout out Vivacious. Uh, so yeah. So then, um, Shamari. And all the girls chime in and basically drag Keely. And Keely looks back and is like, I'm not the only one. Aubrey, thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> Aubrey Aubrey's like, like, bitch, how I get in it? 
<laughs> just like, bitch, I don't have nothing for you. Um, what else? Yeah, because they basically were like, okay, and this is the theme, and this is probably like the last overarching theme that we have to go over. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is Keely doing in the group? Because at this point, Aubrey has went and done creative direction. She has gotten the girls a look. She has went and gotten like all of these things together. So creative direction is being done, but not by you. So like the girls exactly. basically at the end confront Keely, like, why are you here? We kind of want you in the group. And like I said, I think Keely would be perfect in a group. Like Cheetah Girls, 3LW, she's that other person. That mm-hmm. other girl that's in the group. The problem is Keely can't handle that. Keely's personality mm-hmm. cannot handle not being the best. If you look at the way she responded when Aubrey pulled out her little poster board notes, and it was the same type of energy you gave at the end of 3LW in 2000. It's the same type of energy you gave when Cheetah Girls broke up at the One World. It's like that same type of, well, she was, and 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 I could have done this better, and I wanted this part, and I was It's like, if it's not about you... It's not about nothing. And I hate that about mm-hmm. her. Like, it's like you've never left high school, girl. Yeah. And, you know, that might be why she's getting voted out and won't be able to be on any tracks. But, oh, wait, she wasn't going to be on any tracks anyway, so. Right. It's like you land, like Iris said, you land down vocals and you're not even going to be there. So what's the point? We could just eliminate you right now before the season even gets started. <laughs> <laughs> you could be first out, honey, like Coco Montrese. Uh, in All Stars, <laughs> which I just watched. I don't want somebody to go Google that. Right, I don't want somebody to go Google that. And be like, I watched season five, and she was actually the lipstick assassin. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god! Is there anything else we need to cover? I think oh, we have done. What? I'm sorry, but it was hilarious when they were getting into Keely ass at the end. They kicked her off the couch. <laughs> she was like, they was like, we only oh, need people in the group part. on this couch. Yeah, I was like, only people that's in the group is on this couch. And then Keely had to get up and stand in the kitchen. Oh, no. I need to go back and watch the, the end. Oh, my gosh. It was like they kicked her off the couch really quickly. I want them to do that in Drag Race. You can't sit on this couch, okay? This is for bitches that stain. <laughs> this is for bitches that have won challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, that's pretty much where it ended, guys. We're going to see who stays in this competition and who must return to the house, pack their belongings, and go home. Um, We're going to see who sashays away if it's Keely, if it's Aubrey's water weight. Whatever happens next week, we will be there watching, and you should be here with us for these reviews. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe wherever you're watching this. And this thought, Ricky leaves for the girls. And I mean the girls. This thought that Ricky leaves with the girls. Mm. Just like our freeish fave, Nivea, if you get to a new house, make sure you scope out the pantry and see what's in it, because that'll tell you all you need to know. Why do I feel like I'm getting up like Kim K in that commercial? (laughs) Bye, y'all.